was a big night uh, for British cinema. The BAFTAs last night returning in a glamorous star-studded ceremony hosted by David Tennant in the capital. Well, join us tonight, Showbiz reporter Stephanie Tetchy. Uh, Stephanie, were you there? No, I wasn't. I've well, you look as if you were. I, of course, I'm bringing glamour in the studio. Um, <laughs> I've been to many of BAFTAs, but I found it much more better to watch it from home because uh -huh. I, I did find it quite predictable, to be honest. Uh -huh. Due to how award season has been already, there was no surprises that Oppenheimer won seven out of its 13 awards. But what made it more special for Christopher Nolan, who is a British director, one of the best we've got in this country he won I on mean, home soil so he won best director the film won the top award of um, best film and it was what even made it more special it was presented by michael j fox and he's you know stayed out of the limelight for many years um so it was a good night for oppenheimer killian murphy he won leading actor he put his heart and soul into i mean he is film. such an incredible actor he and such is. a diverse actor i actually really love seeing the success that he's had i haven't seen this yeah. film eamon says it, i mean you, you're not a big fan of the film it's dull it might yeah. be a, a dull story but i do admire I mean, it's always just amazing. I tell you what it's about. Has a different accent <laughs> to the accent that they use. Do you know what it is? It's a fashion movie. parade. All Ooh. I could see was everybody wearing these clothes and whatever year yeah. it was, 1950s or whatever. What was it? What year was it? The it was, 40s. It was, it was like the 40s to 50s. Yeah, that's right. World War II time. And he's pristine. His hat never comes off his head, even yeah. though it's blowing gales and whatever. And if they just ruffled up his clothes a bit and made them a bit <laughs> dusty and worn looking, yeah. I would have believed it. Yeah. But everything was just too perfect. It was mm -hmm. quite a basically beautifully made, lovely, not mm -hmm. denying that. But then you look at it and you think, yes, I get this bit. Yes, I'm not stupid. I get that bit. I get that. It's just too over explaining. And it was a waste of three and a half hours that I'll never get back in my life. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, Eamon. I take that critic or criticism of the film. But I think what has made this film stand out in award season is that Christopher Nolan has managed to take the topic of the creation of the atomic bomb and changed it into entertainment for people to see. Last year, we saw the big thing was against Barbie versus Oppenheimer, and it done well in the box office. So that's that's why we're now seeing it pick up all the awards it did. Yeah, nothing for Barbie. Or Margot Robbie's on the front yeah. of the sun this morning. But really, you know, she's sort of getting the headlines yeah. and the cash, but yeah. none of the plaudits. There were some big snubs last night. You know, Killers of the Flower of the Moon by Martin Scorsese. Well, that's another one no that would depress awards. you. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I did actually enjoy that film, did actually. You? Yeah, I did. Mm. I like Martin Scorsese. I think his work is incredible. Mm. But Mar Barbie didn't pick up anything last night, so that wasn't a big surprise because, again, all through award season, it hasn't picked up nothing. What cinema goers like seems to be not connecting with the members who are actually picking what is going to be up for awards, which is a shame because I think when people watch these awards now, they're just not connecting it with, with it I as I totally they agree with you, Stephanie. Best film I've seen in the past year, by far, mm -hmm. Ridley Scott's Napoleon. Yeah, that was up for a best film yesterday. Again, it didn't win, so yeah. it's a shame. Didn't Prince, win anything. Prince William was there, which was a nice to see him out and about, but of course he was solo. He is yeah, the president. Yeah, a bit of a lonely figure I on the red carpet. He sort of did a dash rather yeah. than who, doing who, who was that? Prince William. Yeah. Oh, right. You know, we always love to see the Princess of Wales was, on the red carpet. He was sitting next to Kate Blanchett, but I guess he has a lot on his mind at the moment. He mm. is the president of the BAFTA, so he he did confirm a few days ago that he was going to attend. So, you know, it's good to see him out Definitely. and about. Um, but another big winner of the night was Emma Stone, who yes. won leading actress for Poor Things. Um, she used her speech to thank her dialect coach because in it she plays a character called Bella Baxter, who's actually British. So I think she'd done pretty well. But again, the good thing about the BAFTAs is it's, it gives a good sign of who's going to be picking up stuff at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't imagine in a million years we're going to see Emma Stone's film. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you seen that yet? No, but I really want to see it. I think she does really well. I would really rather have my fingernails pulled out. <laughs> uh, I, I, so, so I look at these and I just think, yeah. whatever happened to good old-fashioned entertainment? And there's just nothing there for it. I totally agree with you when you say there's a complete disconnect between the audience. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to sit and think when you last saw a really good yeah, film. Yeah, I did used to look to awards to help me choose yeah. a good quality film. And now if I do that, I, I do often 
even tune into well, something quite I think, quite you know, guys, I think it's everything's been done under the sun when it comes to the film industry. Like, we've gone over the silver screen years where we used to get good classics, good things that are original. So now what you're finding with all these film studios, they're almost trying too hard now to try and get new films and new yeah. concepts. Well, do you know, I'm looking here to see where um, Tom Cruise's latest Mission Impossible film no, is, and it's not, not there at all. No. Another superb film. No. But Another superb it, film. Eighth one or something? I mean, how many iterations of oh, Mission Impossible? This is the eighth one, yeah. Yeah, but I'll tell you, I defy you to come away and think it didn't affect you or you didn't think it was any good, and it's only part one mm. of a two-part Well, you know what film. I tell you to do, Eamon? Become a BAFTA member so yeah. that your voice can be heard. Mm. So when it comes to voting for these awards... People who like films that you can will see them represented. There's 8,000 members and so far... Can you just become are... a member? Or do you have to be... Well, you have to work in the creative industry. Oh, OK, which well, Eamon's perfect do, so you can for that. Right, let's <laughs> nominate <laughs> Eamon. We're off the back to this morning, aren't we? Yeah. Um, but there has been a bit of controversy this morning. Um, Hannah Waddingham, she did perform the memoriam. So yes. she performed time after time. And unfortunately for the BAFTAs, they missed out Matthew Perry. So oh, no. a lot of fans were quite vocal about that online. They've said, you've mentioned all these actors you and you miss Matthew Perry. Because so Matthew Perry's not a film star. He's, he has starred in some films. Yeah, so What? Um, the whole Nine Yards. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He done that. That. And there's another one, Only Fools Rush In. No, I get, I get your point, I get your point. So but... BAFTA was forced to put out a statement last night saying that they will include him in the BAFTA TV Awards, okay. which will be in Quite right. Yeah. OK, good. Stephanie, thank you very much. We didn't need to go, we didn't need to watch it. You filled us in on everything. Love it. Thanks very much. So they have a TV version of all of this then? Yeah, and we've got all We should behave, awesome shouldn't software. criticise anything now. Yeah. You know, we might be getting something. Too late something for that, <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, well, thanks so much. Is there anything that you've gone to see in the past year that you think should have been uh, applauded, lauded and wasn't? Mm. Um, uh, as I say, Napoleon, for me, was um, the standout film of the year. That and Mission Impossible and Jared Butler's playing. Every and time. Every time. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, as Stephanie says, there's a disconnect between these judges and, uh, and what they see there. I will put it out there to you. Oppenheimer, Dullsville. Absolutely Dullsville, over-explained, too long. You could an easy cut half an hour out of it and it still would be too long. Um, but there you go, is what okay. it is.